Hi there, folks. I'm Siddharth Tanak Parkankar. This is CNB. Thanks for joining us. It's a different setting for me this week. Well, that's because I wanted to introduce you to the brand new season of the Mahindra AQ, the fifth season to be precise. And that is where we test your auto quotient. This is going to be the setting. This is where all that epic battle is going to take place because we will have our fierce competition like we do every year. But things kick up a notch this year and there are some changes. We've spiced it up. I will introduce you to all of that as we go through the show today. But let's get on with what we do best. Here's a car that so many of you have been waiting for. The comprehensive review of the fourth generation Honda City. It's got to be one of the most important models in our market. The Honda City has been and probably will remain as such. Why? Because of its segment, size and appeal. This is the benchmark car, right? And then there's the badge. Honda cars are seen as desirable and premium in our market. And the biggest reason. It is now available in petrol and diesel variants. Now we were the first to show you the car in detail, remember? But that was a static car, so let's get straight into the drive. And yes, with the iDTEC variant first. Well, of course, that 1.5 litre diesel engine is the same block from the Amaze. It's not as noisy, but uh, you know, the good thing is it has a very different character. And of course, this is not the same car. It's a bigger car. It's got more bulk, but it has a different character. This engine does. And uh, that's a good thing because you want that separation really. Now, it's not punchy because there's a very definite and very clear and very obvious bias from the engineering team towards uh, when, when, the, when it comes to the tuning towards fuel efficiency. Honda wants bragging rights in this segment, wants to say it has the highest fuel efficiency in its class. 26 kilometers per liter is what the company claims. And uh, the onboard computer right now on the car has been giving us, well, somewhere between about, about 20 to 21 and a half uh, kilometers to the liter. So pretty good on efficiency for sure. But uh, having said that, it's not a sluggish car. It still performs well. It's smooth. Power delivery is fairly decent as well. The part that bothers me is that uh, when you are sort of cruising along in higher gears, you want to just take your foot off the uh, gas just for a little bit and, uh, you know, change lanes or whatever. There's a certain amount of vibration that creeps in between 1300 and 1500 RPM that almost compels you to change gears, to downshift, even though the engine isn't asking for it. So that's a little annoying. But the gear shifts, let's talk about that. Six-speed gearbox, definitely a big USP in my book. Really nicely mated to this engine otherwise. and. Uh, gives you good ratios. The petrol has a five-speed manual and it has a CVT. We'll drive the CVT in just a bit. Nice features coming in like the little triple turn indicator to change lanes, one touch, that's nice. The steering wheel, you know, I wish it had a telescopic adjustment as well and not just tilt because I'm not finding a 100% comfortable driving position. I would have liked the steering wheel to come a little bit closer to me. So since I move my chair forward, my knee has been sort of hitting the dash so a little uncomfortable there on that so uh, that's about it when it comes to the drive and uh, now it's time to take a look at the specs on the 1.5 id tech this unit seems more like it was always made for this platform more than the amaze really the numbers look healthy and overall performance will be seen as positive on this car Handling is also fairly good, but ride quality, once the hallmark of the city, is not as taut as I would have liked. But then these aren't the areas that really made the city such a favourite anyway, right? It was always about efficiency and that premium air.
As you've seen before on the program, it's a nice attractive cabin, good use of colors and materials, but uh, the part that people will like is just this whole central console. It's got this very cool piano black finish. Yes, it might get smudgy and dirty, but it's still nice. In the original sketches, by the way, this whole area was looking more like an iPad, but this still works, it's functional. This is the cool element, the uh, touch screen climate control system which just sort of lights up on you. The downside to all of this, the nice instrument cluster, the great little screen there that tells you so much, is that uh, people like me who on a highway, for example, even in the daytime, want to use their headlights, want to drive with either the parking or the headlights on, well, there's no daytime running lights, so sometimes you want to do that. Look what happens. The minute you turn on the lights, boom, it's all gone. It just kind of disappears on you. And when it's bright sunshine, the instruments, the music that's playing and the air conditioning, you know, you want to be able to quickly glance at it, maybe make a few adjustments, touch a button here or there. You just can't see it. So you've got to switch off the lights, bring it back to life and then operate it. So that's feedback for Honda. That's not something that will take too much work to change because remember cars like the CRV had this function earlier where uh, you'd have the optotron meters. Everything would be nice and bright day or night. So uh, that's something to work on, I think, because, well, it is a little bit disconcerting. But otherwise, the cabin is something that buyers in India are certainly going to look forward to. The rear is comfy and the legroom and rear AC vents won't be lost on anyone shopping in this segment. I did switch to this red car for a short while. That's the 1.5 litre petrol CVT. The petrol city is familiar territory. It is of course available in manual too. It's smooth, it's energetic and overall a pleasurable driving experience. The CVT will once again take some getting used to after having a conventional auto transmission on the last gen. But I do expect a number of urban buyers to consider this variant and once again like some of the other CVTs in the market, Honda claims higher fuel efficiency on the CVT over the manual. The car has cruise control, push button start stop, sunroof, climate control, reverse camera and much more. But while most of that will be restricted to the top variants, Honda has not declared just how many variants there will be, nor the prices. All that will be revealed in early January and deliveries will also begin only in the new year. Is it attractive? You bet. Is it contemporary? Yes. Does it do enough to send home that premium message Honda wants to send home? Sure it does. Nice big headlamps, huge amount of chrome in the front, chrome door handles, all of that. And lots of work done in the metal as well, which uh, really works these days, isn't it? Uh, you've got this nice sharp line along the side as well. Really pronounced. Looks pretty interesting down here especially. Now, the point though that I'm trying to make, the last few generations of the city, each time you had a generation jump, the styling jumped as well. There isn't a big, huge leap happening this time. In fact, so many of you, as I mentioned on the show the last time we had the car, have said this, that this looks like a facelift on the city and not necessarily a huge generation change. Honda has chosen to do that and has chosen to do it specifically. The company still says that this points to the future styling direction that not just this car, but other cars from the stable are going to take as well. But having said that, it surprises me that when it comes to the overall profile, the length keeping that exactly the same they could have done something a little bit more revolutionary i mean the kind of things you see in the segment that get people's attention sure the ford fiesta may not have uh, done much in terms of sales but look at that design it's so distinctly different the hyundai verna it did that the last city did that this one not necessarily doing the same thing hmm so as honda goes or the city anyway the car may seem to just fall short of all the big expectations so what's my verdict? What's the bottom line? This is definitely an improved version of the outgoing city. It's an improved car, but it's not revolutionarily different. It's not a massive leap. There's not that one thing that I can point to and say, my God, how did they do that? So that could be a problem for some people, right? Well, what's the flip side? And there is one. The city was always the segment benchmark, the best seller. The only thing lacking in its armor, the big chink was the lack of a diesel variant. Now we've got that too. And when you improve on the best seller and on the benchmark, well, then you've still got 
the car that is the king of the hill. Now that's the all new Honda City. Remember, you've got to react to that car, very important model for our market. Now last week we had for you all the details from the LA Auto Show 2013. Some of you have missed some of that because of course uh, we had curtailed programming timings due to our 25th year anniversary here at NDTV. Special moment for us. But not to fear because we've got the big highlights for you coming up right now. We will start with the two cars grabbing the headlines at LA this year. The Porsche Macan and the Jaguar F-Type Coupe. The F-Type Coupe has a 3-liter V6 engine and the power output is 333 bhp. The 3-liter V6 S has 372 horses and the 5-liter supercharged F-Type R Coupe has 540 bhp output. Jaguar's CX-17 concept also made its North American debut here at the show. The Porsche Macan is the new baby Cayenne alright, but it's claimed as being more of a sports car than an SUV. It's got Porsche's new 3.0-litre and 3.6.0-litre turbocharged V6 engines and there's a 3.0-litre diesel V6 that's been borrowed from the Audi SUV lineup. The world has waited for this one, isn't it? We've talked about it for some time now. We know that there's going to be a, a baby Cayenne coming in and it's going to be called the Macan. Now, instantly, of course, those of you who know me well enough or watch the show regularly enough, you do know I am going to be attracted to the car for its color. It's a wonderful show color. They've debuted it in blue and uh, the pictures I tweeted as well had this color, isn't it? Now, at the rear is where you see a nice distinct identity. There's a little bit of that... Uh, style statement that comes through it gives the car its individuality the way that the tail lamp has been done is very unusual very different it's got this little depth to it um, you pick up a little bit of a sense of uh, the 911 sort of styling language there but as soon as you start to come around to the side and uh, look at the side profile the way the roof slopes down the integrated spoiler the fenders all of that is of course exactly like the Cayenne in terms of just the design language that it's following it's a lot lower it sits lower it's not a huge ground clearance the whole idea there being that this should be uh, then a good driver's car it, it gives you that impression when you look at it you think hmm, I want to get into that I want to drive this car and uh, even in the front from a proportion point of view a slightly shorter hood than what you have on the Cayenne but you take a look at the car you take a look at the pictures and you think hey is that the Cayenne is that just a new Cayenne because they've maintained that design language up front now to some people that's probably a good thing because you want to attract kind of a buyer who says hey I'd like to buy the Cayenne but maybe I'll buy something a little bit less expensive but on the other hand I think uh, like at the rear you saw a distinct identity I think the car needed that up front as well so that's just an initial sort of a, an impression that I'm picking up right now like I said I can't wait to drive it what's the downside well we know this car will come to India the downside could be the pricing because uh, it will possibly go into that 60 to 70 lakh rupee range and for that kind of pricing well just take a look at the low roof line take a look at the kind of space you see on the inside that is cramped that's a very limited amount of headroom and very limited amount of legroom as well to the Indian buyer who is going to unfortunately sit at the back that could be a downer you look at cars like the X3 and you think a lot more spacious for a driver well like I said this promises a lot of performance oriented uh, driving dynamics and so that's the part of the story which I can't wait to find out more about can't wait to drive it and uh, I think that's truly when you'll be able to announce some sort of a verdict on the Macan but I have to say it's definitely got a lot of attention here here in the US as well this becomes a very relevant model for Porsche and its volumes on the SUV business are only going to get higher in fact some projections put the SUV business contributing as much as 65 percent of Porsche's revenues going into the year 2015 and this car will contribute a lot of that. Now since we were at LA we dropped in to see the American brands and everyone from Buick to Corvette to Cadillac from GM in particular kept us interested and I have to say that's especially true of the new Cadillac El Mirage concept. Back to the Germans and BMW debuted the 4 Series Cabriolet 
Yep, that's essentially the 3 Series base convertible. Remember, all two doors from that family will now be called the 4 Series. BMW also showed us the X4 concept, a coupe styled SUV like the bigger X6. That's coming next year. Mercedes Benz had this outlandish Vision GT concept that's been designed for the Gran Turismo video game. But it offers future styling clues. The brand also showed off its CLA and GLA compacts, which we can't wait for here in India. And the souped up A45 AMG based GLA 45 AMG. Wow, that really looks ready for action, eh? We also picked up on some other cool cars like the Subaru Legacy concept and the new WRX. But these sadly have no value for our market, though it would be great to get this Japanese brand someday soon. And finally, a look at the new generation Toyota Corolla, which we also would like to see in our market soon. For several years now, the Corolla has pretty much been the generic in its segment, isn't it? Any market you can think of, that's the Corolla segment. Which is why the cars also became very generic. This is the first time in, uh, I guess, what, three generations that we're seeing a nice, edgy, dynamic Corolla which has really nice sharp lines and a distinct identity when it comes to the styling language. Good looking car, nice colors, good show car. The only question, what do we end up getting in India? Because you remember, there is that little different strategy when it comes to our market. So I certainly hope that you get a nice, taut, sporty looking sedan like this because the segment, well, it certainly deserves that. And uh, with the new Octavia, Things have gone up a notch when it comes uh, just to the overall benchmarking in that space. So, Toyota, you need to do something like this if you want to catch up in that space. Alright, so the way the AQ works is that you've got all these teams from the different zones of the country. So, you'll have a zonal final first four of those and then you'll have the grand finale which is when we will have an all new AQ champion. More details on the Mahindra AQ coming up on the other side of a very short break right here on CNB. Keep watching. It is time for India's most credible and most awaited automobile honours. And you have the chance of driving away in the winning car and bike. Vote for the CNB viewers choice car of the year. 7. Ashok Leland style. 8. Ford Echo Sport. 9. Honda Amaze. 10. Hyundai Grand i10. 11. Nissan Tirano. 12. Skoda Octavia. Log on to ndtv.com forward slash CNB. Type CNB, the number corresponding to your choice, along with the name and city, and SMS it to 56388. Win big with CNB, India's most watched auto show. Vote now and win big with CNB. Welcome back to CNB. Thanks for staying with us. Now, as I promised you details on the fifth season of the Mahindra AQ, we've cranked it up a notch because this year everybody was eligible to participate. That's right, it's not just about engineering school students or B schoolers, everybody could take part. Here's a glimpse of what went on in the preliminary rounds. Season 5 of the Mahindra AQ and we are back to challenge the country's automotive knowledge and test its auto quotient. And this year, it's bigger and better. It's been very heartening for me to see the way that the AQ has grown every year. The number of people participating certainly keeps shooting up. And this year, remember, there is something very different happening for the very first time. The AQ is open to everyone. So it's not just restricted to B-schoolers, not just engineering students. Any auto enthusiast is welcome. And so the level of competition has certainly gone up. I am really excited to be at one of the city rounds here in New Delhi. I'm told that we have great participation, lots of numbers in the hall. So uh, we have to go in there and get the action started. All the city rounds are on. I'm lucky to be able to host this one. Let's go in. 
This year we have also crossed 1 lakh participants over our 5 seasons and we're now all set to crown a new AQ champion. The round in Delhi got a lot of interest just like our other centers. Which car manufacturer uses the phrase zoom zoom to describe what it calls the emotion of motion that it claims is inherent in its cars? Is it Fiat? It isn't Fiat. XUV. Mazda. It's the other Japanese brand nobody talked about. Yes, Mazda is right, 100. The runner-up team was last year's uh, champion. We are kind of heartbroken because uh, we came second. But uh, we the, want to come back. We, we want to come back. back. Yeah. We want to do it in Jaipur. And guess what? They did qualify from Jaipur. And so they will be joining us in our studio soon. Siddharth then also hosted the Mumbai round. And Mumbai also featured an AQ veteran. Over the past few years, we've consistently had maximum performance coming from the maximum city. And so, I really expect this year too, uh, to throw up a really nice strong set of contenders. Now, there are a lot of people who are already here. We're all set to get started. But uh, something tells me that a really strong team will emerge from Mumbai. And that's exactly what happened. Scorpio with 1000 and Thar with 1500, the winners today. I always look forward to it because it was my final year in MBA school, so uh, getting a chance to again participate, it was a good, great thing. So every year I waited, probably this year will be it. Get ready to AQ, the regional finals and the grand finale and here is the schedule. So lots of action coming up on the AQ this year. Remember that we'll have all of it for you on the NDTV network in just a few days from now. Look out for my tweets on that next month. Now we move on to the other big review many of you have been wanting to see. This is the latest from Royal Enfield, the Continental GT. Born to be wild. Especially in the company of the sun, sand, and the open road. That's the new Royal Enfield Continental GT Cafe racer combining old world authentic macho looks with the modern biking experience. Cafe racing was a popular biking culture especially in the United Kingdom where motorcycling enthusiasts used to ride from one cafe to another. And the fun part was that cafe racers would be customized by each biker to look distinctive, lighter and faster. Now the first factory produced cafe racer was way back in 1965 by Royal Enfield and now we are here in hot hot Goa to test ride the new Continental GT Cafe Racer from Royal Enfield. Now the strategy for the launch of this bike is very different from the other bikes of Royal Enfield. They're pushing this a lot overseas. Remember you had that big launch in London and now six countries in Europe already have these bikes in the showrooms. They're also going to be aggressively marketing this in India, especially the urban cities and the metros. Uh, we're going to be riding this most of Goa, exploring it and stopping at a lot of cafes uh, to kind of get a feel of the bike itself. So let's go have some fun. Over the last two years, ever since it was showcased at the Delhi Auto Expo, Royal Enfield really pulled out all the stops to ensure that the Continental GT didn't have some of the niggling issues of some of its earlier bikes. Smartly engineered with a new twin down tube steel frame chassis, the Continental GT really, really surprised us with its super solid handling. Add to that Pioli twin gas charge shock absorbers on the rear suspension with 41mm telescopic forks in the front, keeping the ride stiff and steady. 18-inch rims with Pirelli Sport Demon tyres with front and rear disc brakes, letting you soak in the scenery a little bit without worrying about braking late. Now the Continental GT not only looks good on the road but also handles equally well, uh, especially with Royal Enfield really paying a lot of attention to the vibrations. Not that the vibrations are not there, especially on the handlebar, but they're quite minimum compared to the other Royal Enfield bikes. Also, the new chassis has really improved the handling. And so coupled with the good suspension and the excellent braking, it really gives you the confidence to push this bike to the limit. 
uh, that also makes you equally greedy wanting more power but Royal Enfield bikes are never about the super speed but really about the experience of leisure riding and you get plenty of that on this one. Royal Enfield has rebought the existing 500cc UCE engine to provide 535cc and slightly more power at 29.1 bhp and also more torque at 44 nm. This comes mated to a 5 speed gearbox which is precise and it doesn't sound too clanky. Just to make the cafe racer design a little bit more fun and funky, Royal Enfield unveiled a refreshed new yellow in addition to that racy red. We figured you've seen a lot of the red Continental GT on the road, so we thought we'll bring for a change the refreshing yellow one onto the beautiful Bambalim beach here in Goa. Uh, just to get a sense of the kind of design elements that have Royal Enfield has brought in with the original Cafe Razor design. They retain most of the good looks, so it's an extremely attractive bike. But some of the things that really stand out is this uh, low, you know, clip-on handlebars with these cute little mirrors attached at the end. Um, also, the slim, elongated tank really make a, makes it really stand out. Um, and what I really like is that Royal Enfield hasn't done too much stickering on it. They've left it fairly neat, just some continental stickering right next to the fuel cap. Um, also, the uh, racing style hump uh, seat, it really, the single seat really makes a difference to the overall design. But there's going to be an option where it's going to be a two-seater and that I think will kind of kill the overall design of the bike. Um, but nevertheless, the important question on the riding stance, because at first glance you probably get a sense that you know, it's going to be a riding stance that's neither a sporty one, neither a cruiser one. So it's going to take some time to get used to it. In fact. Uh, during the early interaction, uh, the Aisha Motors MD and CEO Siddhartha Lal indicated that when a few of his first long rides, there were lots of aches and pains, especially on his arms as he rode this bike. But once you get used to it, and trust me, you will get used to it very quickly, um, you'll really enjoy the ride and you wouldn't want to get off this bike. The Continental GT also gets a twin pod cluster like the one on the new Thunderbird with the speedometer and tachometer. There are also aftermarket accessories like the must-have bar-end mirrors, aftermarket exhaust pipe and the optional dual seat. And for those who love the new yellow shade, these will be available only after April 2014. Royal Enfield has also realized the need and market potential for riding gear in India, so you do get a whole host of accessories designed around the cafe racer biking theme. Now Royal Enfield has managed to price the Continental GT very attractively at just over 2 lakh rupees on road in Delhi. Now what that basically means is that there's going to be a lot of initial euphoria for booking the bike. Um, also which basically means that there's going to be long waiting periods if you're late in booking this bike. But uh, deliveries are expected to start by January. But what Royal Enfield will also do is try and build the cafe racer culture which is so important and they managed to do it so successfully with clubs and rides with the Bullet brand. And that's pretty much a wrap here on CNB this week. Please join us next week. We'll have something special for you as always. Please wear your seatbelts. Please wear your helmets. Bye-bye. It is time for India's most credible and most awaited automobile honours. And you have the chance of driving away in the winning car and bike. Vote for the CNB Viewer's Choice Two-Wheeler of the Year. 1. Bajaj Discover 100M 2. Honda Dream Neo 3. Honda CB Trigger 4. Honda Activa I 5. Mahindra Centuro 6. TVS Jupiter Log on to mdtv.com forward slash cnb Type cnb, the number corresponding to your choice along with the name and city and SMS it to 56388 Win big with CNB, India's most watched auto show. Vote now and win big with CNB.